Mm-hmm. Hey guys, welcome to the transfer application workshop. This is meant to be a tool to get you going on applications and answer some commonly asked questions. Um, it is not meant to be an individual guide for this. So if you have specific questions, schedule an appointment with me or Elena um, to get your specific questions answered. So for what to expect in this, um, you're not here, so we're not gonna do your questions, um, but we will go over the different types of applications, how to know when to use which application, the different components you can expect to see in every application, and then some commonly asked questions that we run into that aren't really covered elsewhere. So let's get started. So types of applications, there are four basic types. Um, the common application you've probably heard of at some point, it's been around forever. It's a nice application because it allows you to, to apply to multiple schools at once. Um, you create an account with them. They, you can do it specifically for transfer now, which makes it a lot simpler than if you were trying to use the original application as a transfer student. It helps you keep track of deadlines. It helps you figure out what needs to be compiled still and kind of does the organization for you. It can sometimes be a little bit difficult to navigate. I definitely get questions once people have started their Common App, um, but it's not too terrible. And it does kind of simplify things if you're applying to more than you know one or two schools. Downside is not all schools use Common App. So you just have to be careful once you get going to make sure that you're double checking that all of the schools you want to apply to do take that application. Mass transfer application is the simplest application you can do. Um, it's really good if you'll be, if you will be a mass transfer student in an approved pathway. If you are not a mass transfer student, you cannot use this application. And that includes if you are completing the mass transfer block or the Gen Ed Foundation. Um, but aren't otherwise in a mass transfer pathway, this application is not for you. Um, but if it is for you, it's the simplest application. Um, depending on the school, it'll be a physical paper application or it'll be something you complete online. It waives your application fee, it waives your essay requirement, um, all of that kind of stuff. So that's really great if that's the option for you. If it's not the option for you, there are still two more choices. The coalition application is less common, um, but it is similar to the Common App. It's only been around since about 2015, so it's still pretty new. More schools are being added all the time. I think it's about 70 schools um, nationally for will take a transfer application through coalition right now. UMass Lowell is one of them. Um, the focus is on affordable schools and college access for normally underrepresented populations. So if you qualify for a Pell Grant and you use the coalition application, all your application fees are automatically waived. So that's something to keep in mind. A cool feature they have that Common App doesn't is a locker area where you can save your essays and recommendations and score reports from College Board and stuff before you're ready to upload. So you can kind of have everything in one space online ready to go, but not quite yet part of your application. So it's kind of a cool thing that it offers. You're honestly really unlikely to use this application, but it is an option. So I wanted you to know about it. And last, but certainly not least, are just homegrown applications for every school. Um, we'll have one on their website. If you click apply, you will be led to these applications that they've done themselves. Um, sometimes there'll be a specific transfer one, sometimes there won't be. Um, sometimes this can be a little bit simpler to complete than the Common App, but you'll have to fill out all of the information multiple times if you're applying to multiple schools. Um, it's good if you're applying to a small number of schools or if you have a really clear first choice and that's really where you wanna go, let's do this application first and maybe get a result back before making a decision to apply other places if your timeline kind of allows for that. A thing to note, Fitchburg State does not accept the common application. Um, you would need to use the, the application on their website. And if you are a mass transfer student looking to go to Fitchburg State, you also just use the application on their website. So I know Fitchburg is common, so just use the application on their website. 
So when to use each application type, this just like anything in the transfer process, nothing is cookie cutter, right? So this is certainly going to be a case by case basis, um, depending on which pile of schools that you've come up with um, that you'll be applying to. Like Sarah had mentioned, if you're only applying to a few schools, and let's say two of them aren't on the Common App and only one of them is, you might find it just easier to do all three of them, the individual programs um, application, instead of even doing just that one on the Common App. A general rule of thumb, if you are applying as a mass transfer applicant, even if you have the option to do mass transfer or Common App, you're always going to want to choose the mass transfer application. Sarah and I can help you through all of this, right? This is just an overview of what you can expect. So when you're searching for each of your, the colleges that you'll be applying to, you know the types of applications that you can expect to see on the website when you're doing um, your exploration. Again, once you have a more complete list um, of which programs you'll be applying for, that helps us better guide you which applications you'll be using for each program. Does that sound good, Sarah? It does. I think you've kind of covered all of it. So now we'll go on to the application components. So in general, this is a basic information regardless of if it's a homegrown application, mass, um, mass transfer, common app, most of this information um, you'll be required to submit. Some will be omitted, but we're gonna go over all of it. So choosing the right application. A commonly asked question, even though you are completing a program, most students who are transferring, completing a program at the mount and graduating, you are not a graduate student. You are still in your undergraduate. So a bachelor's degree is considered an undergraduate degree. Um, so you are completing an undergraduate application. When possible, you're looking to see if the program specifically has a transfer application. So that's gonna cut down on some of the requirements, hopefully, versus the applications that are geared for students applying right out of high school or without any other transfer credit. So those are the two types of applications that you're looking for. Basic information, you're gonna find this across the board, biographic, demographic information, your major, they might be asking for some second choice options in there as well. Housing, are you looking to dorm and live on campus, living off campus, things like that. And then any sports or activities you're interested in joining at their college. An essay or personal statement. So this will probably look different than an essay statement or personal statement that you're asked directly out of college. They're already getting a lot of information about who you are as a student by looking at your college transcripts, right? You already have a track record as a college student. So they're able to already get a picture of who you, who you are academically. So this is a time to highlight what your major and career goals are, why you chose this program, and why you're a good fit for their program. As a reminder, um, it's always good to have a second set of eyes take a look at your essay. So if you're at this step in the process yet, um, let us know and we can try to connect you with one of our writing tutors and work with you a little bit um, on your essay and personal statement as well. Absolutely. Um, a lot of recommendation will be asked for just as frequently as an essay or personal statement is asked for. Um, keep in mind that you want to ask any professors who you are asking for a recommendation early. So if you have an application deadline of March 15th, you want to give at minimum two weeks notice um, that you need something. And I would pull it another two weeks to sort of a, I would like it by March 1st. I'm going to ask at least two weeks before that, at least two weeks before that. So that way, if you run into a professor who is human, um, you have a little bit of wiggle room that you've built in. In general, though, if I want something from a professor by March 1st, I want to ask by February 1st. I want to really give them plenty of time. 
another thing to know, I keep saying professor and I mean it. Um, these, appli these applications are looking for an academic letter of recommendation. So your club advisor, us as your academic counselors, we might know you really well and we might be able to speak to you, but you really need an academic recommendation. So you need to ask a professor. Um, when you ask the professor, it is really nice to, as a courtesy, remind them, you know, here are some classes I took with you, maybe the project that you were particularly proud of, if this was a professor who you had more than once or just a really good semester with, sort of talking about reminding of this is something that I really grew with um, to kind of give them something to go on in that refresher of, of who you are and maybe what you want them to highlight. Um, so just keep that in mind, give as much lead time as you can there. A midterm report, many colleges will ask how you're doing in your current classes. So you might apply with your grades from fall semester all ready to go. And it'll show that your spring classes are in progress and they'll wanna know how those are going. They will have a form that needs to be filled out, but the college does not have a formal process for midterm grades or a midterm report. So that needs to be brought to your professors individually. Most of them will have done something like this before and it won't be news, um, but just keep it in mind that that's another step and another thing that will take a bit of time. College report is um, just to confirm your attendance at the college, your discipline report, all of that kind of stuff. And that can be gotten through the Dean of Students depending on the type of program that you are applying for, you may need to do a portfolio or an audition. Um, some schools will do an, an interview as mandatory or an interview as optional. Um, that's something else to keep in mind. You might need to get to a campus to be able to do an interview or in these times, maybe a, an interview will be virtual. So how do I make sure I have a really quiet space to do this, an appropriate background? all of that kind of stuff to give that time. And last but not least, an application will need transcripts. Um, it will always need your college transcripts. It will usually need your high school transcripts. You can request your Mount Wachusett transcripts in iConnect under the Forms and Documents tab. Um, and you can request your high school transcripts by calling your high school. Um, so just make sure that you consider all of these things that need to come together the actual filling out of the application and those basic components takes 20 minutes, but writing an essay and giving someone lead time for a letter of recommendation and giving your high school time to come up with your transcripts all takes time. So you wanna make sure you're giving yourself that, that full amount of time to do this well. Commonly asked questions, um, can I call the school and ask for help? If, if you're stuck on something on the application, can you call and ask for help? Yes, absolutely, call admissions tell them what the issue is, they will be happy to help. It will not hurt your chance of admission whatsoever. If something is optional, is it really optional? So sometimes you'll see a, um, an essay is optional. Do you need to do it? The answer is no, it is truly optional. They wouldn't say it was optional just to trick you. If it, it can sometimes give some light to you know, why you really want to be there and, and, you know, maybe helpful if you are right, right, right on the line of being admissible to that school. But in general, if it's optional, it's optional. How do you request transcripts? I actually already covered that. And do I really need my high school transcripts? Yes. If they are asking for it, yes, you do. Um, it is so that they have record of you having a high school completion, which is necessary for you to be in college and be part of their program and receiving financial aid and all of that. So if you are worried though, that if I provide my high school transcript and I had a 1.5 GPA in high school, but I've really turned it around and I have a 3.4 now, and is am I now gonna not be accepted because of my high school grades? The answer is in nine cases out of 10, no. They are not going to be considering your high school record. They just need proof of a high school record. In rare instances, yes, for a really competitive school, it will come into play, but in most instances, it's just checking a box. So do not worry about that in, when you're going to do those applications. So that's it. These are the basics of applications. Um, if you have more questions, if you have anything that you need more help with, 
Elena and I are always happy to meet one-on-one -on -one to go over that more specific stuff, but it should be to get you going. So thanks for watching and Thank we you. will talk to you soon. Bye.